what is good to the family it's ray j back with another video and in this one i'm going to talk about what's going on with the overall market break down some important levels for tesla talk about spy in the qqq and break down what happened in the morning for the markets and what levels you should be watching for before i break anything down about all this information though before i get into any more details let me just mention a couple of things real quick firstly i am not a financial planner take none of this as financial advice whatsoever and also if you guys can please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this it not only benefits me it benefits the entire tesla community as a whole and finally, don't forget about the Mumu link, which is down below and in the description. If you put in $100 into the account, you are guaranteed 5 free stocks plus $100 in cash as a reward. But anyways, let's talk about the markets, what on earth is going on. So now Tesla's breaking out. And in the morning, I told you guys that first off, when I released my first video, I told you that uh, we're going to be watching support and resistance levels. We had this new data as the initial jobless claims came out. But I was going to be very cautious because we had some bearish signals on SPY that were still valid. But then what happened was many of these bearish signals became invalidated and they ended up becoming traps set by the market makers. And with all the puts that were being bought, they ended up causing the market to reverse. So as a result of that, I, I foresaw what was about to happen. So I released a video in the morning uh, about an hour after the market opened. And I warned you guys that Tesla was going to squeeze past 230. I told you spies would break 429. And I told you that the QQQ would break 352 at least. That's what I was said in the video. If you don't believe me, you could rewatch it. And if you look at SPY, this thing is currently at the high 428. And it broke 429.21 today, reaching my target exactly. If you look at the QQQ, this thing is currently at 352.72, breaking my target. But it touched 353.62 at one point today. If you look at Tesla, this thing managed to break above 230, uh, reaching my other targets. And if it broke 230 in another video, I told you you'd be watching the 233 zone. That's where Tesla went to. It actually broke a little bit higher, hitting this resistance at 234.5. But for now, Tesla is still very strong. And we're going to see what happens tomorrow with all the puts expiring. But what I want to do now is just break down the levels for you guys, right? If you're scalping test, you're going to be watching this 5 EMA right over here. You could also look at the next support zone in the 233s. But that's not going to matter too much for now. I just want to talk more about the levels because I didn't get, get a chance to tell you about the levels in the video I released previously. I really rushed to get it out there as fast as possible. And let me just note that I'm not a financial planner. Take none of this as financial advice. You, don't, uh, you, you shouldn't just solely invest based off what I say. Uh, I'm not giving you financial advice in any way, shape, or form just because I talk about levels or I tell you I think the market's going to get a big break. That does not mean you have to do that, and I'm not telling you to do that. That's your own choice. I want to make that clear for all the people in the comments saying that you know, you know, they made money thanks to me or this and that. It's not because of me. It's because of you. You made the decision, and you saw the levels which I'm talking about. But now, anyways, now that, that I made that very clear, let's talk about these levels on Tesla and something very important about it. So when it comes to Tesla, uh, in the morning, or at least yesterday, I told you guys that we might see Tesla pull back a bit. Remember in the morning, I said that yesterday, not in the morning, uh, yesterday in the afternoon, I said that. And Tesla did pull back a little bit in the pre-market. It actually came very close to my target of 221. It ended up going to 222.16, right? And then after that, Tesla managed to hold up quite nicely alongside the market. And I saw a bullish divergence developing on many of the indices. As a result of that, once again, I told you Tesla would likely see a very big squeeze to the upside. I released it during this time when Tesla was in the 227 zone. I told you it's going to break 230 plus. That's where Tesla went to. I called that move and that could have helped a lot of people. So am I perfect? No, I make mistakes. It happens. But I did call these moves to the upside in the morning. You can rewatch my video uh, if you don't believe me. On SPY, it reached my target, so it did the QQQ. But anyways, now let's talk about these levels on Tesla. Tesla is going to be fighting 234.5. If it breaks that, there's a little bit of resistance at uh, 235, but it's not very, very strong. The strong resistance is going to be 236.17. If it breaks that, there's a lot of room for it. There's some resistance around the 238 zone, not very strong. The next major resistance is going to be 240. Tesla could fly all the way up to 240 if we manage to hold above 236.17 by tomorrow or beyond. Now, if Tesla you know, comes down, right? You're going to be watching this level right here. Uh, you're going to be watching this 233 zone right here between 233.5 to about 232.5. This entire zone right here just saw a lot of shop and resistance. It's going to likely come down there if we get a big rejection here. And, it, you know, it's getting very, very close to the 233.5 zone. Even like right now, you can see, uh, if anything, 
As Tesla is continuing to drop a little bit, that's completely fine. It's still very, very strong on the hourly time frame. Don't worry too much. It's just a very, very uh, minor drop. It's holding above 230. That's what's very important. And if the market continues to pump, it has more potential. Now, if it breaks below 233, there's going to be major support at 230, then 228.85. Then we have the 227 zone followed by 225. Those are support and resistance levels on Tesla. Watch them very, very carefully. Uh, let me also now talk about SPY and the QQQ because there's something else you need to know. If SPY breaks and holds 429 and continues to pump, we have some resistance now at 429.21. It's not extremely strong. This is where we rejected today. Then we have 429.62. Then we have 430. So this entire 429 to 430 zone has lots of resistance. But if it breaks 430 one day, right, whether it's, you know, tomorrow, whether it's next week, depending on FOMC, the next resistance is going to be at in the 431 range between 431.26 to about 431.75. If it breaks that, and the way I calculated this was based off previous data, based off Fibonacci retracement levels, and based off other methods that I use. But after, uh, if, if it breaks this, we have some resistance at 433.18, not super strong, but there is some, uh, there were some rejections in the past around the 433 area. If it breaks that, then you have 435 uh, in the zone all the way there, specifically 435.6. All right, so I just wanted to note that those are some resistance levels, major ones all the way up there. Support's going to be around this 428.5 level, 428, 427.5, 427.26 followed by 426.5. So watch all of those zones. Let me also note that overall, when you zoom out of the chart like this, we are in a bigger range right here. We're still not really breaking super strongly to the upside. We're not really crashing to the downside. We're just stuck in this range between the 429 to 430 resistance. This is like the big resistance zone up here and supports around 426. We're holding and just going back and forth and back and forth. We're still doing this. So please watch these levels carefully. And watch support and resistance. There's no confirmation of us breaking out of this range just yet. And whichever direction we break in, we're going to see a big move in that direction. So if we end up like somehow breaking below 426, not saying we will, but just hypothetically, there's going to be a big move to the downside. If we manage to break above this 429 level and test 430, then break that. There's going to be a big move to the upside after that, in my opinion. But we need confirmation. We need the catalyst. As for Tesla, Still trying to fight for that 234 area. Still looking very, very strong, very nice from Tesla. We're about to close. I think we're about 20 minutes away from close. Tesla's looking very nice. Uh, has more potential to pump. Don't forget that if it breaks 234.5, the next major resistance is going to be the 236 range. Watch that very carefully on Tesla. That's the next important level to watch for if it does break here. Finally, for the QQQ, my prediction was this thing would break uh, 352. It managed to do so. Uh, it's going to be testing 353 to 354 as resistance. This was the previous support zone. Now it's acting as resistance, the entire zone. Uh, there's a lot of shop here in the past, historically, and that's where I came up with this level. If it breaks above 354, you can be watching 355.5, break that. Then we're going to be watching uh, 358, basically. I, I'm sorry, 356 and then 358, because 3, 358, 358 comes after 356. So we're going to be watching those levels very, very carefully. And then if it breaks that, there's 360. But once again, I'm not going to count too much on those upper levels. For support right now, it's sandwiched between the 50 EMA at 352 and then 353, going back and forth and back and forth uh, between those ranges. If 352 breaks, you're going to be watching it get closer to about 3. Uh, now we have some support at 350.95 and then 350. So a lot of levels of support on the QQQ. It's holding up all right so far. We're going to watch and see how it holds for tomorrow. This looks like an accumulation that was quite nice so far. So we'll just watch these levels carefully. Now, in my previous video, I did not get time to release anything about the levels. So I'm very sorry about that, especially on Tesla. I didn't talk about like too much about like 233, 234.5 or like 236. Now I got this out there. I'm going to release another video later on. I know a lot of people are now asking me, do, do, does anyone ever like trade NEO? Yes, people trade NEO. But the reason I'm talking so much about NEO is because I think it has a very nice setup and we're about to see earnings tomorrow morning. So just get ready for NEO. I'm not promising anything. So always manage risks, not financial advice. And be very careful with how you play earnings. Okay, anything could happen. Always be prepared for that. But I do believe the odds favor upside for it. This setup looks very nice. It's still holding this inverse head and shoulders, bullish divergence, cup and handle all in one. 
and it has a good chance at shooting above eight dollars at the very least even 8.61 or even nine dollars uh there's a lot of uh option premiums when it comes to volume and uh, open interest for the nine dollar strike especially for tomorrow and also for next friday it could be uh coincidence it could be because someone knows something who knows but like i said neo has a lot of potential just calling it out anyways thank you for listening guys i'll see you guys in a later video where i'm going to break down more news just wanted to call out these levels they're very important to watch for and so far tesla looks very nice we're about to get a bullish cross in the four hour time frame looking very nice and i'll see you guys later on thank you tesla to the moon is long term is very bright and peace out.